you guys doing? Hey. <laughs> Welcome to well, Talking <laughs> We're talking guacamole, which is not what we're talking about today. No, we're <laughs> talking about another college is making guacamole. Yeah, online. making like, guacamole. Uh, like, like, uh, well, you know what? We can make it a competition on-screen guacamole thing. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I make a pretty sweet guacamole, so... Oh, we're not talking do. guacamole today. Well, hold on, but that could be like, and again, guys, uh, if there's anything you want us to talk about, I have, we have, I, I know we have already mapped uh, all the shows for the season, but <coughs> if there is something that you really want us to talk about, let us know. Shoot us a message, but leave it in the comments. You know what? We can always change it and modify it to whatever you want to hear absolutely especially if it fits in one of the, one of the uh, topics that we're talking about i mean this is guacamole. this is well, yeah guacamole, we, guacamole. <laughs> fresh salsa uh, we uh you know this started off a couple weeks ago we we're talking about asian noodles and it really branched out into uh how do you make fresh pasta how do you do this last week we talked about ravioli and it's like well next week we're going to talk about how to make stuffed pasta and that's what we're doing today here on Talking Food with Chef Carlo. Leave us a comment if you're watching live on Facebook. Leave us a comment on the comment section. Uh, we may put it up here so that we can answer your question if you have a question about anything that we do today. So Chef, Chef Carlo's here. I'm Drew, uh, executive producer of Studio 67. Welcome CIA to graduate, awesome, yes. awesome man, super guy. Did oh, we just do on. a high five on here? Yes, that's we another did. one. Yes. Okay, that's, that's and really this bad. is the best TV producer that would, that I would, that I have ever met. I'm the only one you've ever met. <laughs> How do you know? I don't know. Ah. You know anything? Anybody famous? A uh, couple of people. Okay. That one I used to work in Miami. Okay. But they were not as cool as you are. Oh well, I appreciate that very much. Okay. Okay. So we're done with the uh, accolades. The, with the accolades. Yep. So let's talk about stuff, stuff noodles, stuff pasta. Uh, when you think stuffed pasta, what's the most, the first thing to stop? Well, as a kid, I mean, come on, it's ravioli, of course, you know. I thought you were going to say shells. Well, no, not really shells. My mom used to make the shells, the, uh, the, the big ones with the stuff that we'll talk about. I know we have a picture of it. Uh, but no, for me, it was always ravioli. And my mom would buy either fresh frozen ravioli or <clears throat> the stuff in that little small number eight can. With, with a little, red can, red with, can a with a fat guy, chef. With um, a guy with a hat, yeah. Oh, my God. Are we one. talking about Chef Boyardi? Yes, that was my first experience with stuffed pasta. So that's Yikes. the first thing I think about is ravioli. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know. I'm sorry. We were poor. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ravioli <laughs> can be made with anything and everything, and flour is cheap. Yes, you can it actually, is. It's no excuse. You can buy a five-pound bag of all-purpose flour at the supermarket for three bucks. Yeah. Put some eggs in there. And the stuffing, we're going to talk about what to stuff or it with, but it can be anything. Anything you want. Anything you want. You want to go crazy and make it a barbecue stuffing? No problem. Take That's your right. barbecue, chop it fine, mix it with some ricotta because ricotta makes everything better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but why not butter? We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to get there. And, uh, and hey, Put some barbecue sauce in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, some Italians will be cringing right now. Barbecue, pork barbecue stuff, ravioli. Mm, welcome to America. Yeah, why not? We make them delicious here. But the canned stuff. No, mm, no, 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 no. You know, they cook, you know they cook them inside of the can? Do they really? Yeah. Really? Like they put the raw pasta inside of the can with the sauce, and as it pasteurizes, it cooks the stuff in there. I'm kind of horrified right now. Ah. Is it pasteurized? Is that why they cook it in there? So you mm. don't have any, uh, yeah. Authentic Italian ravioli from a can. From a can. <laughs> I understand if you're like hiking the Appalachian Trail and that's the only food somebody was able to give you at 5,000 feet above sea level in some trail and some shelter. No problem. Or it's the only hurricane or, a, or a snowstorm food you have left in your pantry. It shouldn't be there the first time. I understand that. <laughs> But I want to show you how easy it is to make this. Now, ravioli. You're mm -hmm. actually lucky your mama went for ravioli because the most popular uh, stuffed pasta in the United States are shells. Mm -hmm. You don't want shells out. Do you know what shells are? Do I know what shells hold are? On, hold on, hold on. Caffeine, caffeine. Well, I mean, if you've got the big shells and you can stuff them with, you know, spinach and ricotta cheese and uh, uh, ricotta, sorry. Ricotta. And, yeah. Oh, you can say 
I don't know how to say it the American way. Ricoda. Ricoda. Ricoda cheese. Well, I, what about North Carolina? Ricoda. Yeah, exactly. Elongate exactly. the vowel. Yeah, a little Ricoda. bit more A in there. A little bit more A. Yeah. I can't get it. So. But shells actually the most popular ones. Mm -hmm. Shells are the most popular ones because they come already ready. You just have to cook them halfway. Stuff them with anything you want. Put them in a bed of sauce. Top them up with mozzarella cheese. Stuff it. Stick it in the oven. Yum. Half an hour later, gooiness, deliciousness, stringiness. Mm -hmm. I would add some bechamel sauce. But they're, they're so versatile, the shells. I mean, you can take, what well, I mean, stuff it with anything. Mm -hmm. You can stuff it with anything. Sure. The most important, uh, I, I think, I believe when you do a stuffing is it has to have some kind of binder, something mm -hmm. to bring everything together. Right. My favorite binder is eggs. Uh, you can take Let's go back to the barbecue. <laughs> you can take the chopped barbecue, throw a couple of eggs in there. It makes it kind of like a paste. Stuff mm -hmm. it inside your, your shell. Uh, in that case, why not? A nice bed of bechamel. Lots of cheese on top of it. Put them right next to each other. Bake them 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And awesomeness come and out. They come out. And I cook them also halfway. I don't, wanna, I don't like to cook my pasta full way when I stuff it. Because then it's going to go into the oven right. and cook for 20 minutes. Right. Now, when you use fresh pasta, uh, it's a little bit different. It cooks for uh, it cooks for about four minutes mm -hmm. because the pasta is fresh. Uh, fresh pasta by itself, if you're making a, a tagliatelle or a spaghetti, two minutes, it's done. Uh, now, once you're using ravioli or tortelli that you're folding the dough, now you have two layers of dough. You need to let it cook a little bit longer, about five minutes. But that's it. It's fresh pasta. Can you cook fresh pasta from the raw state in the oven? Sure. Yes. How do you do that? Uh, stick it in there and add some sort of liquid so that uh, it soaks up some of the liquid. You know too much. You've been hanging around the kitchen <laughs> way too long. Well, we've been doing this show for a little while. Oh, yeah. you've, been, you've been hanging in our kitchen too long. Yes. Actually, there is this misconception that you have to cook. No, okay. It's not a misconception. It's tradition. Let's say you make lasagna, a.k.a. pasticcio. Uh, you have to cook the pasta sheets after they're cooked. You layer your lasagna and then you stick it in the oven. Actually, you can use raw pasta sheets. Just make sure you add some liquid in the, uh, in, in the baking sheet. I'm not talking take a picture of water and go like shh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's not going to turn out great. No. So I'm talking about a pasta will absorb about 50% of its own weight in water. So in that case, if I'm making my... Uh, my, uh, let's say I'm making my lasagna with a nice marinara sauce, I would add, uh, I weight my pasta. If it is weigh one pound, I will add a half a pound of liquid. Mm -hmm. Again, not <laughs> water. I will add like chicken stock mm -hmm. to my marinara sauce. It becomes nice and liquid, layer my stuff. When it comes out, it's nice and hydrated. Right, because it's going to suck up the chicken stock, but it's not going to suck up the marinara. I mean, it'll suck up a little yeah. bit of the marinara juice. But also, yeah. it's going to also suck up the flavor of the, uh, of the, of the sauce and mm -hmm. the pasta. And it's going to actually absorb all the flavors. I that's why I love to do my pasta raw when I do lasagna. It actually suck up the juices, the cooking juice, and it tastes even better. Mm. Not only that, the best lasagna, it's day after lasagna. Because it's marinated? Yes. Uh, everything's after, better day after. Mm, <laughs> it cooks, you leave it there. You let it get cold, mm -hmm. you put it in the fridge, and then you slice it, and then you reheat it. Oh, that's when it gets better. Which is great because last week uh, they made pasta carbonara on uh, on air. Well, they made the pasta for the pasta carbonara. I made it Friday night, pasta carbonara with the eggs and everything else. It was so good Saturday afternoon. It was, mm. I mean, because the bacon grease had gotten in there and, uh, I, and I sauteed some spinach and onions and threw it in there and it's just, oh. oh. you went like hot, fancy on that oh, carbonara. Yeah. It actually took some uh, cherry tomatoes, cut them up, and I dressed them in uh, Italian dressing and then applied those after everything was all mixed and put them on top. So with, that's carbonara with spinach and tomato. Yeah, it was good. You can't call it carbonara. Okay, it was carbonara with spinach and tomato. No, and, and that's one thing I stress <laughs> a, a, a lot to the students. We have, when you have a classical dish, mm -hmm. uh, it, let's say carbonara, it's been done forever. It's named when I go to a restaurant and I want carbonara, I expect to see my bacon, my eggs. I don't, I don't expect to see spinach and tomatoes right. just hanging around. But there is nothing wrong on doing that. Just make sure that if you modify a classic, you can still call it carbonara, but let them know it's carbonara with whatever you're adding. Whatever you're adding. Gotcha. And it's uh, the most uh, typical example that we give at school. It's pesto, which I got some. You got some pesto? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we made it. 
beautiful thing about pesto is once it's summer and we have the beautiful bushes of basil out there, we make the pesto and then we freeze them in small containers and mm. it holds really well in the freezer. Nice. You can use it year round. And uh, like pesto is, pesto is basil, mm -hmm. garlic, oil, no, no garlic, uh, just a little bit of garlic. Pesto, uh, basil, olive oil, uh, parmigiano or pecorino romano, mm, that's it, and pine nuts. Now, can you make a cilantro? Can you substitute uh, bay leaf, uh, bay leaf, um, basil yeah. for cilantro? Mm -hmm. Sure. Of course you can, but you cannot call it pesto. Right. Now you have to call it cilantro pesto. Because if I sit at your restaurant and you give me a pesto that is made with cilantro and I really wanted to eat pesto which is made with basil and I stick my fork in first one and it's like, whoa, this is cilantro. Right. I will not be a happy camper because I was expecting to eat that cilantro. It's either they didn't tell that, you that, that, that. or someone really screwed up in the kitchen. Yes. Got their herbs mixed up. It's I li like, it's like, is this cilantro or basil? It's yeah. like, you need to go back to square one. And <laughs> These the are both green. I don't understand. Oh, trust me. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, you need to go back to the first class. And, yeah. and, and, and it's like, and you know, g g people, the best teaching classroom is the supermarket. And it's for free. Mm -hmm. Just walk around the aisles. Oh, look, basil. And it, things have names. <laughs> 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 things have names. Rec uh, oh, look, tarragon. Oh, that's the way it looks. That's right. Oh, oh, look, basil. That's the way it looks. Oh, look, living basil. That's the way it looks. So that's the best free college you can attend, the supermarket. And then if you talk to the people in the produce, they help you navigate the place. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to stuffed pasta. Yeah. As we, as we usually, as we do, <laughs> get off on tangents. We go on tangents. <laughs> so, uh, most popular are shells. What can you stuff? You can stuff any kind of large pasta. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a cannelloni, and uh, and here we have a couple of examples of uh, how to make your pasta. Uh, tortelli, tortellini, and tortelloni. Uh, mezzalune, capelletti, ravioli, ravioli giganti. We're going to make a couple of this today. Now, question that, is, uh, that I get asked, what's the difference between a ravioli and a tortelli? Mm -hmm. Well, tortellini is a one sheet that you modify it into a shape. So basically, you stuff it, roll it, and twist it, and put it back together. Yes. Gotcha. Ravioli is creating a ring or anything that with a round shape. Mm -hmm. Ravioli is a double layer pasta. Right. You got layer one, pasta, layer two, and you make it. Now, we have fancy molds to make ravioli, mm -hmm. which you can find this guys at the uh, best, pay, be, best place in the world, either eBay or um, Amazon mm -hmm. or your sur la table. What? That place what? at the mall. It's called sur la, sur, sur la table. Oh, okay. People call it sur la table. Oh, ah, okay, I got you. But the French is sur le table. Oh. And does, it, does, does it make you more special when you walk in there and you're saying it in French? No, you're going to pay like 10 times more for this. <laughs> Just for the name? <laughs> Just for the name, because you're going to sur le table. <laughs> Just by walking in there. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to pay. Your like price that. just went up. <laughs> Just by walking in oh, it's fancy. Oh, look, it's $40. <laughs> it's like, wait, it's $10. And you get that on eBay for $5.95. $9.95. $9 and Bed Bar and Beyond, my favorite place, because you walk in there with the coupon, you might fi be able to find this. Uh, yes, you can use this mold. Uh, you don't have it, no problem. I will show you how to do them by hand mm. with a knife or with your own hands. It's very simple to do. Uh, we go back. So we're going to show you how to make manicotti, uh, very simple uh, stuff pasta, and I'm going to show how to use the, the mold, and I'm going to show you how to do them by hand. Awesome. Which is very simple. And also one thing, ooh, more stuff. Mm -hmm. See, today we're going to make cannelloni because it can be made with the, uh, with the uh, mitzer, pasta mitzer that I have here. Yes, I brought my own pasta mitzer. This is awesome. This is turning into a kitchen. Oh, I know. And, uh, and also, I was going to bring the manual one, but this one is my latest acquisition. Mm -hmm. I took my <laughs> allowance money and bought me a couple of rollers that I attached to my kitchen. Perfect. And uh, manicotti is really hard to make by yourself uh, unless you have an extruder mm -hmm. because uh, manicotti is the cannelloni, but it has a wavy pattern on the outside. Right. I love manicotti because they hold more sauce, mm -hmm. but there's nothing wrong with fresh made cannelloni. Fagottini, uh, it's basically purses. Mm -hmm. I pronounce it fagottini, and you make the little purses. You can make them small, big. 
Now, with stuffed pasta, I've seen people, oh, can you make the ravioli big, mm -hmm. giant, and overstuffed. It's like, okay, I like mine small, uh, like more of them. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody asked, oh, well, what else can you serve them with instead of sauce? Imbrodo. What broth. does in broth? Broth. But look at you You're hanging out in the kitchen. You have. <laughs> I had to look it up. <laughs> he oh, said, you had to look it up. He sent me photographs to put on the uh, show today, and I was like, "What does imbrodo mean?" And I was like, "Wait a minute, it's not in a sauce. It's in like a, a broth. So imbrodo must mean broth." Yes. So it's like so a tortellini soup. It's a tortellini soup, but without the veggies and without. It's just a clear broth. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way to make it is. Uh, like I learned from my mom, instead of using chicken, I use a whole hen. Mm -hmm. uh, and the hens, uh, to me, my opinion, they're way more flavorful than regular chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, carrots, onions, celery, also known as mirepoix, bay leaf, let them cook for three hours, and then take the clear broth and cook your ravioli and then serve them like this. Like that. It just They're just served in a nice clear br brodo. Uh, it could be something thicker than that, but clear brodo, it's nice, especially on winter nights. Uh, it's, you have your clear soup and then your ravioli are hanging in there. Uh, I don't like when people, uh, people have asked me, can I cook my raviolis in the brodo? Yes, you can, but the brodo is going to become cloudy mm -hmm. because there is starch that's going to be released in the water. So it's, it's going to be more, it's going to have the, the look of like watered down milk. Gotcha. So I like of the starch to, because of the starch. Yeah. So I like to cook my ravioli in a, a pot of boiling water and then add them to the stock. When it's not even stock, it's brodo. Right. It's flavorful brodo that is being seasoned and ready to go. And of course, then you can dress it with anything you want. You want to turn there some mushrooms and spinach and Parmesan cheese. I love those plates. I had to say that. Okay. <laughs> I love those. We plates. shall find them on the interwebs. In the interwebs. And on the interwebs. And you can have some. And you can have any kind of pasta in brodo. What do you mean? Even spaghetti. Mm -hmm. You can cook your spaghetti and then put them inside a nice clear broth. It looks better. Oh, but what about minestrone? Minestrone is a complete different monster. Minestrone will have already veggies. And uh, it depends which part of Italy you come from. It will have cannellini beans or borlotti or some kind of beans in there. And usually it's made with short, uh, short pasta. Right. Like ditalini or cavatappi, radiatori. And it's a very hearty soup. This is like nice, clear soup to start, not too heavy. Mm -hmm. And most minestrone are tomato based. Right. Minestrone it seems like it's more of a, a, a stew. Al yes. Almost the thickness of a stew. It's a quick stew. Yeah. It's a quick liquid stew in which, and everything gets cooked in there. I like to cook my pasta from a minestrone inside of the mixture. Sure. That way it releases the starch and it gets thick. And you're never worried about it being cloudy. You don't have to worry about being cloudy. Because you've got already got a tomato base in there. Oh, it's going to have so much tomato in there that, but actually it's going to become nice and thick. Right. And there's some people that like a, a, a runny minestrone, a thick minestrone. Mm -hmm. That is basically, that's going to be your choice and sure. your preference right there. Sure. But let's go back to stuffed pasta. Stuffed pasta. Yes, that's what we came to talk about. That's what we did. <laughs> so today I've made, I've made a very simple stuffing of pork and veggies. Okay. Uh, and why pork? <laughs> because we can. Because it's good. Because it's delicious <laughs> and pork is fantastic. And uh, so we're going to take a quick break here and we're going to set up the pasta machine that I show you. Oh, this is the pasta machine I have. Uh, I was able to use my allowance money. <laughs> there you go. It's perfect. It came in. So this is the uh, what we use mostly in the kitchen, the KitchenAid attachment. Uh, this is your KitchenAid mixer and this wonderful things they attach to the machine itself. Mm -hmm. And this one you can make spaghetti, and this one you can make tagliatelle, also known as fettuccine. Oh, so each one is different? Each one is different. Okay. They have different dyes in there. But first... Can, can you buy the dyes separately? Yes. Okay, gotcha. But this one comes in a, in a package, mm -hmm. three of them. Right. It's not cheap. No. No, but... <laughs> it's, yeah, well, the, the brand is not cheap either, but no. they're, they're good to have. But this will last forever. It's just like the pasta machine I have at home. It's still the one that my mom gave me mm -hmm. when I was 18 that she brought from the old country and I'm still using because it's stainless steel. Stainless steel, you take care of it. Don't ever immerse it in water or put this into the dishwasher because it will be the end of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, well, Chef Carlo does for like household people. No, in the restaurant I have tried 
have seen people trying to run this through the dishwasher at the restaurant. It's like, uh, no, if you want to die, do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you never run this through the, uh, through the washer. What about sanitation wise? We're going to cook it. It's going to drop into 212 degree water. Anything will die in there. Yeah. So don't worry about it. So if you take care of this, it will last forever. And of course, today what we're going to use is the just the regular sheeter. Um, it attaches very neatly to your mixer. And the good thing about this is when it attaches to the machine, you don't have to be cranking it. Nah. Nothing wrong with that. No. I have worked in restaurants, 80, 90 seats restaurants, and we have the cranking pasta machine. You're like, really? We're going to use that one? Yeah, that's what you have. We'll make it happen as a good caterer. Right. <laughs> we're catering chef. We make it happen. So we're going to take a moment here, and we're going to set up the pasta machine, and we're going to get Drew making some pasta. We're going to start making some uh, cannelloni, and then some ravioli, and then some fagottini. And uh, if we have time, we're going to cook them and eat them on go. air so you can get jealous and go like, I want some of that, <laughs> and go make it. Remember, uh, check us out on Facebook. If you're watching live, if you have any questions, leave a comment, and uh, our producer, Amanda, can put it up on the screen for us so we can answer. We'll be okay, back. we'll be right back. Join Nash Community College Saturday, April 29th for the second annual Blue Fest. This day-long event includes the third annual Run for Knowledge, an inaugural disc golf tournament, and fun-filled events on Nash Community College's beautiful campus, including music, food, electric line pole climb, craft beer and gourmet pizza sampling, hands-on activities, and more. See demonstrations of advanced manufacturing, beekeeping, first responders, culinary arts. Join us April 29th for a celebration of education and free family fun. We did it water, we did it woo. We did it water woo. Hello, my name is Stuart the Nighthawk Hawkins, and I'm a DJ here at Nash Community College's Big Bang Radio. So tune in Mondays and Thursdays from 8 to 10 for the wind down. Smooth jazz, geared to help you relax from your busy day. Did you know Nash Community College offers 12 degree programs entirely online? Are you interested in information technology? Explore information technology systems, network management, system security, healthcare informatics or web design and administration. These two-year programs are only a few of the online associate degrees offered through Nash Online. Students receive the same quality instruction and resources as on-campus students without ever stepping foot on Nash's campus. Learn more about Nash Online today at online.nashcc.edu. All right, we're, we're, we're back and dancing. Uh, Come on, the Oompa Loompa song, but with pasta. With pasta, we're going to make this. Oompa Loompa, this is how we make pasta. <laughs> Okay, and here I have uh, semolina pasta. Uh, this one, uh, I like to make semolina pasta with just water. Uh, you can make it with eggs too. It's a very, very simple, uh, a kilogram of pasta. Yes, I went metric. A, a go metric, man. Uh, yes, a kilogram of pasta, 500 grams of water. Mm -hmm. Mix it, let it rest. Ta -ta -ta. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Keep it nice and wrapped so your pasta will not get dry. If you expose your pasta and you let it just sit in like that as you work, mm -hmm. the outside is going to dry. Okay. If the outside dries, it creates a crust, and then when you roll it through the runner, it's going to start tearing up. Okay. So how do you avoid that? Just cover that baby. Mm -hmm. That's it. Gotcha. Keep it away from the air. This one hooks up very easily. That's it. And we put the little break in there. That won't pop away. So all the pasta rollers have thickness, and all pasta rollers are not made alike. And I didn't bring my glasses, so I can't read. What's it say there? One? Yes. Awesome. On one. So we are going to go and start show how easy it is to sheet, sheet or flatten pasta. See, we cover it nice and easy. Boom, put it down here. 
Pass is going to be a little bit sticky, but don't worry. Look at that. Oh. Looks lovely. Oh, what we need just like butter in there. Okay, turn on the bad boy. And uh, always a little bit of flour. That's not a little bit. That's, that's a, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Let me show you how easy it is to, to do this. Just get it in there. Hey, hey. Okay, that's the first thickness. Make sure it's nice. And when we put flour, don't worry about it. You cannot over flour it. Uh, at this stage, we're just making sure it doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, look, look at that. Beautiful. And we're making a mess. That's okay. It's okay. I got to That's why they make uh, vacuums. Now, that's home, I have a dog, so he, he, he cleans up the mess. Well, that's a different uh, kitchen mess. Okay, so now we roll, roll it to the number three. Okay. So you go one to three. I go one to three. I don't think there is a need to roll it to number through number uh, two? one, two, three, four, five. I usually skip a number. It's not that I'm lazy. It's just you're always running against time in the kitchen. Gotcha. Look at this. I'm not using the crank handle to do this. It's so much faster and you're not... I uh, know. Not so getting exercise though. It's okay. <laughs> That's why we jog. For this kind of pasta, I'm just going to take it down to number four. Because mm -hmm. I like to be a little bit thick. And so we want one, three, four. One, three, four. That's a long pasta. Oh, but you're going to see why it's long. Because I'm going to show you first how to, how to use the ravioli stuffer okay. or the ravioli stamp. Gotcha. Which is I've been using at home since I was a little bambino. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about pasta is if you kind of like mess it up on the process, mm -hmm. You can always roll it back in a bowl and start from the beginning. That's right. So you said a kilogram of flour. Yes. How many eggs? Uh, to a kilogram? Uh, ten eggs. Ten eggs to a kilogram of flour. Ten eggs to an equal for a half a pound of flour uh, for a, a half a kilo. You need five eggs. Gotcha. And it will never. So a quarter kilo up. would be two and a half eggs. Why? It's just you. Why you want to make a quarter kilo? I don't kilo know. I'm just trying to do the math. Just, just, <laughs> just make. Do they make a kilo or a half a kilo? Trust me, it will go, it, it will <laughs> sell. If you, make a, if you make a quarter of a kilo pasta, 250 grams, it's going to be like, why did you make so little? No, as you can see, I made a lot. Guess what's going to happen after the show? We're going to eat it. Yeah, lunch in the kitchen. Okay, look how easy this is. Okay. Just put it in there. Take your first layer. If that's the first layer, and just press it down. Make sure it doesn't stick to your hands. <laughs> and make already the little holes right there. Okay. Okay, now. We get the stuffing, and I have to get off camera because I put it in the, all the other way around, all the other way around here. Oh, it's soft. Yes, it's soft and delicious. Yes, pasta is really delicate. Now, here's the thing, and what I love to do, uh, I sometimes like to make a really flavorful broth, mm -hmm. and I reduce it halfway, and I add gelatin. Okay. Then I let it cool off. In the, in the fridge and it becomes really nice and tight. Okay. Then I cut it into squares, mm -hmm. smoke, I dice it, and I put a dice of the gelatinized broth in there uh -huh. along with the stuffing. Yeah. So once it cooks, after it cooks, the, the broth melts and gets together with the, uh, with the stuffing mm -hmm. and then... And plus the pasta soaks up some of the broth too. But then when you bite the ravioli, it has this explosion of delicious broth inside. Oh, lovely. Once in a while. Lovely. And this is, I love to put my stuff in, in piping bags because mm -hmm. it's easier to use. Uh, if you need the assistance of a spoon, that's fine. Uh, you're going to see a lot of moms. No, you do it with the, uh, you just do it with, uh, with the spoon. It's like, you know what? I like my piping bag. I have better control in there. Now, now what type of sausage did you use? It's ground pork. Okay. Uh, you know what? You don't have time to do this. Go get it, uh, your favorite sausage. Mm -hmm. Get it off the casing. 
put it in the piping bag, and you can make sausage uh, uh, stuffed ravioli. Yeah. You can make it a bratwurst. You can go. Uh, you can go. And that anywhere. almost gets into a, 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 a Polish gnocchi, almost with the brats and um, you well, put rabbit in there. And you know what? That again, the beautiful thing about American cooking. American mm -hmm. cooking is a basically a blend of all the cultures that have migrated to the country throughout the years. Mm -hmm. So I think you're allowed to do anything and everything you want. Ah, and this is why you make it so, so you're just taking this one, folding it over. You're gonna fold it over. Okay. Make sure it covers your ravioli nice and well. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love to use a wooden board. I know we're not allowed to, to use that in the restaurant industry. Uh, it has to be plastic, but since we're not selling this. I'm right. using my wooden board. Oh, it looks better. I know. It's prettier. And make sure you get to the edges. Because mm -hmm. your die down here has got, has got the... You have the die right there. Now, I know this is cute. That is it's cute. Did you thing. get that as a... Uh, uh, it comes with a kit. A parting gift? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this one, it comes with a gift. You can actually... Buy this one online. It's called the ra ravioli ah. lamp. And it comes just like that, and it comes with a little rolling pin, and I love it. Awesome. I wish I was <laughs> promoting that. <laughs> the Chef Carlo ravioli lamp. We no. Should get, we should get uh, paid for that. You know what? We can talk to the metal mechanic department, see if they can make it. Oh, you know they could. Eh, they're busy. We're all busy doing our stuff. And just basically, you just roll. Mm -hmm. And there is the uh, zigrinatura, or the little uh, metal down there mm -hmm. that is going to help you start you cutting right through there. Right cut, but usually the center ones a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. But that's not a problem because we have ingenuity. Flip it over. We flip it over, and, then you go and again we have Aha. this little cutter. Da da da! It has a flat side and a uh, wavy on. side. You got it? Okay, there it is. Oh, okay. Gonna Here, put I'll it. hold it. Hold it so they can see it. So it's got a wavy side and a flat side. It's almost like a little pizza cutter. Except it's this one's got the... Looks like spurs. Like spurs? Can I put it on you? Got cowboy spurs? Yes. <laughs> well, you know what? It could make for a nice Halloween... Uh, uh, a nice Halloween uh, costume. And... You know what I didn't do? Because I'm that? so excited about the you show. Didn't, you didn't flower it. I didn't flower it. Oh my God, I did not flower it. You know what? It's okay. Not a problem. Because we have another one. No, no, wait. What? You give me that one. You can start another one. You play one. with that one. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> you I'm gonna pl this. You play with that one. Oh, one thing I wanted to show also about pasta making. It's a cool, nifty little trick. Sorry that I crossed you. No, you're fine. It's a cool, nifty little trick I learned a while ago. How to put herbs in pasta. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, you play with that one. I am. So, check this out. I have parsley here that I have completed. I have taken just the, uh, the leaves out. And... We're just gonna put the leaves. And you can do this with dill, with chevrolet, with cilantro, but I like how to do it with the parsley. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are gonna fold it on top of it. And this is really cool when you're doing uh, like a nice clear broth, mm -hmm. and you want the herbs to be inside of the. Uh, I can hear my mom in the background go like, you forgot the flower in the thing. <laughs> Even before you made it. Even before Carlo, I made it, my mom probably is watching right now. <laughs> it's like, you forgot the flower. And like, lo so, mom, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's probably down. watching the show right now and go like, you forgot the flower. You just blame it on the coffee. Or, or lack of it. Or lack of, lack thereof. And the beautiful thing about pasta, that's going to be our test. Or test. So we fold the pasta right on top of our herbs. And here's a beautiful thing with pasta. Leftover one, mm -hmm. no problem. Take it back. Take it back. We refold it, and guess what's going to happen? You just put it right through. We roll, put it right through. 
Now we have hidden our herbs inside of the pasta. And we're gonna roll it through the machine while you fit my mess. The good thing is like no special effects here. This is real life. This is, yeah. You're going to do this if you forget the flour. <laughs> oh yeah. You are going to do this. Now, I don't know if you won't be able to see it yet completely, but you're gonna be able to see that the pasta is gonna have the herbs right mm -hmm. into it. And depending on the kind of herb, you can go very thin or very thick. But with parsley, you're gonna be able to go nice and thin to the point that you can cut then your pasta. So be careful. If your pasta starts stirring up like this, mm -hmm. it means you're going too, too, too thin. Too thin. Yep. But it comes to the point, can I have the rolling thing? Yes, you can. My mini pasta cutter. Mini pasta cutter. Mini pasta cutter. That gummit. This there one. you go. <laughs> and then you can proceed and cut your pasta and it will have your herbs inside of it. So ah. you can pre-cook this. You can pre-cook this bad boys. Let's only get the good ones. You can pre-cut pre -cut it into any shape you want. Pre-cook it and then you can let it sit in your nice broth. This one will be for a staff meal. Yes. 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 yes the, 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 anyway, yeah. We love what, staff meal. Don't follow my, my, my workings here. And <laughs> this is what happens when you don't flour you your don't, mold. That's right. It's my fault. If you're just tuning in, I did this. <laughs> no, I did it. Hey, I own to my mistakes. There you go. That's a good thing. We're showing, you know, good mistakes on, on camera here. So remember, if you put your herbs in there and your uh, pasta starts stirring up where the herb is, then you went too thin. So just keep it to a, a different thickness that the pasta won't tear up. And don't worry when you do this, even at the restaurant. Hey, you know what? This has turned into stuff meal. Nothing wrong with that. It's fresh pasta. It's not that it's bad, it's just it's not like... Well, it's see, not pretty. It's not pretty. But the staff doesn't care. Because they want food. They are hungry. And the pasta was good. Okay, so I got this one. Right. Okay, so let's try to do this again, but the right way. Now, you flour it okay. heavily while I work again on the dough. I feel like Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Martin and Lewis. Martin and Lewis which my kids want to watch those movies. I don't, I'm like, really? Are they coming oh, back? they're classics. I know. All right, so we're going to start again. Mm -hmm. If your pasta stresses out like that, don't worry. Run it again through the machine. Beautiful thing, you can run it again as many times as you want. Your pasta is really resilient. It will withstand any kind of abuse you give it. Not abuse, but anything <laughs> you'll do to it. Don't abuse your doll. It's being nice to you. It's being nice to you. Don't abuse your doll. All right. So we're good there. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. No, one that more? Would be, you yeah. got one more to go. Yeah, that would be way too thick. That would be way too thick. Ready for your dough? Ready. Actually, do it over there. Oh, oh, right here is fine. Shh, quiet on the set. Genius is working. All righty. Here, lay it down. Okay. So I'm gonna start getting this bad boy ready. And if this try doesn't go well, mm -hmm. we can go back to TV production. Okay. <laughs> but this one should be this one should be the winning one. Okay. And then I'll show you how to make it without the mold. And that one there is no need to flower your mold. Now we 
a little bit fast here, make sure that it doesn't cross. And uh, some people also uh, apply either egg wash or water between the layers mm -hmm. of dough. Uh, this pasta is so fresh that I don't need to do that. As you can see, it gets sticky. But if you have the need, you can also run a brush with water after that. Okay, fold it over. Okay. All right, not a problem. So let's start stretch it out. And that's the beautiful thing about pasta, it's so flexible. I should have made the lasagna a little wider, but I can hear the clock ticking in the back of my head. It is, we've got about 20 minutes left. 20 left? 20 left. Okay, so you know what? Mm -hmm. Roll that bad boy with a little... You stole my, there he is. Here, put over there, gotcha. so I can start stretching some pasta here okay. to show how to make it by without the mold. And in my house, it's a tradition, mm -hmm. on, especially on Christmas time, that we make pasta. Uh, when, we were, when I was a kid, my mom used to do it almost every weekend. We used to make soft pasta. But now that I've grown and I have kids, so every Christmas I make it a tradition that we make fresh pasta on those uh, lazy Christmas days. Uh, some people go caroling, some people go... I make cookies. You make cookies? I do. You know what? I make him do cookies, too. I it's like, come on, guys. It's cold. It's cookie time. It's cookie time. Or pie. Pie? I'm not a big fan of pie. And, really? Uh, I, I love pie, but i rather make cookies and pasta for Christmas. I'd rather make cookies and pasta for Christmas. And, and we made it a tradition. The kids like it. They love it. And... Uh, We've been making it since every Christmas, pastas and cookies. How's it going? Hmm? It's good. Is We're it gonna, sticking? Uh, yep. No, no, it's good. Flip it. I'm going to flip it over. Flip it right over here. Don't worry, I'll, r I'll run it through the wash. Oh, it's stuck again. No, it's coming out. Bat mold, bat mold. And of course, because we're in the air, it's happening. Because when we're doing the test recipes in the kitchen, everything comes out wonderful. You can use this guy to kind of... Cut them up. Yeah, that one came out nice. Oh boy. Of course, if we we're in the test kitchen, everything would have been wonderful. But since we're live, everything goes wrong. Everything, well, you know what? It's experience. That's okay. See, stretch it out mm -hmm. like that. I still eat them. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're hungry. We're always hungry. Okay. So as, as we fight with those, mm -hmm. Okay, so what are you brushing there? Water. A little make water. It, uh, make it a little extra sticky. Okay. So on this one, oh, but what about I have the fancy mold? I see his suffering. It's sticking. Uh, it's like no problem. That's because we're not in the back. And now it's going to give us a hard time, but no worries. And plus we're hunched over like uh, little hunchback guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> this table's so low. <laughs> it's okay. But see, we can still do the we can still do the job. Now, this is one of the traditional ways to make pasta raviolis without the mold. And then I'm gonna show you <laughs> a very neat trick that I learned a while ago. Okay, I'm about to get this to you here. So this one, you're gonna fold the pasta right on top of it. As simple as that, and I left the pasta hanging there. And it got a little bit stretchy. It's weird when I'm not in the kitchen. <laughs> Everything gets stringy and stretchy. I don't have the control I have in the kitchen. What's going on here? Well, because you don't have the 12 foot tables that usually that's would right. work. 12 foot tables, that's also about this tile. <laughs> 
Okay. So easiest way to do this. Okay. Without the mold. Without the mold. Same way as when you do it with this, you're putting one layer down, putting your stuff on the inside, putting your second layer on top. But instead of rolling across the, the mold, we take that thing. Look there. People will be like, I'm not getting that mold. I'm getting me the rolling uh, thing. It looks say, easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just we haven't flowered the mold properly. And uh, there you go. Look at that. All of that can be re remolded. Don't worry about the air bubbles inside there. Ta ta ta. ta. Look Boom. at that. Perfect ravulous. Homemade, homemade. Let's call him homemade. Okay. Or restaurant made, or made yeah, by. They're perfect our chef. for me. I've never made ravioli before. You never made ravioli? Nope. Is this your first time? This is my first time. Did I pop your ravioli? Yes, you uh, did. Good for you. See, and that's actually is going to look a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Now there is a cool nifty trick to so that's doubling up. Mm -hmm. You can also go single, single layer on your ravioli. And the beautiful thing about it sticks, no problem. We can make something else with it. Now you can make capelletti too. Pasta square, beautiful thing about pasta. Leftover, don't worry. Now check this out. Little bit of stuffing in the center. Mm -hmm. And this one you can just close it as a triangle. Mm -hmm. You have a triangle ravioli. You can sell it just like that. Cut the edges, make Cut the edges, make them fancy so you can charge some more. <laughs> hey, we're here to make money, right? <laughs> you can serve it just like that. Or you can just pick it up, squeeze the air out, mm -hmm. go like this, uh -huh. and go like this. Capelletti. Nice. Try one. All right. Take it over. And I have seen before, if you don't have one of these, it's not as... Use a pizza cutter. Good. You can use a pizza cutter, but you can use a fork if you really want your serrated edges. You want to try with a fork? Yep. A fork has been made. Ta -ta -ta -ta. You make your serrated edges almost like when you're making a pie crust. Now, can you fry that? Yes. Actually, you can. You can just throw that on hot I saw a on. picture of <laughs> ravioli that had been dusted in uh, flour and um, some panko and some parmesan, and they fried it. And oh my gosh, that looked amazing. <laughs> you know what? It's not bad. <laughs> 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 my mom is like, you fried the ravioli. Yes, mom, I did. But that's how now we make it at home. I know, mom. <laughs> just, just go with it and eat it. <laughs> So if you don't have one of these, you can always use this. Of course, you use your pizza cutter size. If you have a pizza cutter, you can cut them across and then use your fork to get the edges if you really want now, to. Now, check this out. Another way of making, I'm making your stuffed pasta. Mm -hmm. Is that a cannelloni? Uh, no. no, actually, you're going to make little dumplings with it. A ah. little bit of water. Makes it sticky. It makes it sticky. You're just going to roll them. You seal the edges. You know you're an expert when you can do that so gently. When I do it, it's like <laughs> everything just falls off <laughs> all over the place. Aha. Look at that. Now, uh, when you do this, mm -hmm. when you do this, try not to use uh, a meat stuffing mm -hmm. because it will it do that. Cutting board it gets on your cutting board. But use uh, a cheese stuffing so it separates fine from ravioli to ravioli. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> this is a little shortcut. So if you use cheese, these guys will come out perf with perfectly sealed edges. That's another way to make it. Awesome. Now, for the cannelloni, it's very simple. The cannelloni, I'm going to make a small one. Okay. And cannelloni, you just tuck. Now, you can decide if you're going to make it over stuff or stuff. I don't like to make, make mine like way too stuff. So I just put the cheese in there. The cheese. The you stuffing? I know. I was thinking kind of low. You've got cheese, cheese on mine. I got <laughs> cheese on my mind all the time. 
and a little bit of water here and and that's your cannelloni. And you can cook it just like that? Just like that. Now you can make it thicker if you want, you can make it thinner. Mm -hmm. I think this is a little bit more delicate than the giant tube of meat. Yes. And uh, But hey, no problem. You want to make it bigger? No problem. We'll make it bigger. I heard somebody in the background, make it bigger. Sure. We'll make it bigger. To make it bigger, of course, you have to double up on your stuffing. Mm -hmm. Woo. And a uh, little bit of glue, AKA water. And your cannelloni is bigger now. Aha. Uh -huh. This one goes straight into the baking pan mm -hmm. and we're running out of space. We are. Nah, don't worry. But it's okay. I like the fact that it's messy because people at home, when you're making stuff, you get messy, and this is the way it is. Now, at the restaurant, remember, we messy. The Sorry. At the restaurant, messy is bad. Keep yes. your station clean. And now, I'm going to try, and in the area of uh, Piacenza, mm -hmm. tortelli are made a little bit different. They're actually made by pinching. And you start by taking the dough in your hand. Uh, should be cut a little more or a, of a rhomboidal side. And you start pinching the dough, left to right, left to right. Ah, how about that? And these are tortellini piacenza style, but the dough is too sticky. Those are better made with a non semolina flour. Mm -hmm. Here, that's going to be a sample for later. It's getting really sticky. And uh, the semolina dough is going to be a little bit stickier. When you use AP flour or bread flour and egg, it gives you a less of a sticky dough. Right. So we made the, we made the tortelloni. Mm -hmm. No, we made the ravioli, ravioli, the tortelli, capelletti. Those are my favorite. The capelletti? Yes. And I let them sit there for a little bit and, uh, and dry out. Now, uh, pasta that is stuffed, you don't let it air dry. Right. Why is that? Well. You've been around. If you've, if you've got, uh, well, if you got stuffing in the meat <laughs> in there, you want your meat sitting out. That's for sure. <laughs> but if, if it dries, it's definitely going to uh, have, you have a difficult time trying to cook it. Yeah, kind of like the meat will turn sour mm -hmm. and start spoiling. So uh, at the restaurant, when we used to make a lot of this uh, pre-production, we used to freeze them. Okay. They freeze really well. So we used to put them on sheet pans and uh, we used to put them on sheet pans and just let them dry. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, let them, let them try and let them, <laughs> let let them freeze. freeze. <laughs> then when they were frozen, uh, they move into plastic containers and it's basically easier to use. And you can cook them straight from frozen. Right. Now, when you're cooking them straight from frozen, just remember the pasta is frozen, so it has to defrost and then cook all the way. How much time we have? We got about five minutes. That's it? That's it. Oh my God, time flies. It does. Ooh, those are gonna go those are gonna get sticky. Gotta put some more flour in there between them. Yeah, I'll separate them out. Five minutes, oh my God, what to do, what to do, what to do? What to do, what to do? Then there is the really wide stamp also. Oh my God, we didn't have time to cook it on the air. Nope. No? Nope. Oh, oh. The golly. Best laid plans. It's, you know what, one thing I love about here, it's like, it's we're having so much fun, the time completely flies. So a couple of guidelines for your pasta. Uh, semolina flour pasta is gonna be really sticky to make a lot of pasta shapes. It's better if you use your AP flour, but why did I use semolina? Because I love it. Even though it's sticky and a little bit more hard to work with, I really love semolina flour pasta. It's really, I think it has a different texture and a different everything. Uh, bread flour, AP flour will work fantastic. Uh, again, you don't need to have a mold. Uh, now I'm gonna make this a little bit on the big side and I'm gonna just use one side of the pasta. 
again to show you that we don't need to have no fancy mold we don't need no fancy mold now look how easy this is going to be mm -hmm. and now this one you can go into mezzaluna which is a little bit of a half moon okay but wait they're not half moons yet i know they'll be in a moment this one you just fold over and press down see how sticky semolina mm -hmm. is now for your mezzaluna for the half moon just start right here come around and yes, there are, s there are molds and there are stamps to do all of this, but you know what? We have found that molds, if you've not flowered correctly, that seems to work the grass best. Well, we need the space and we need to properly flower the molds right. for them to work. And uh, I will be using an AP flower, mm -hmm. an AP flower, um, uh, a bread flower dough, not a semolina. The semolina is too sticky. And now we have beautiful mezzalune. Again, just to show you that you need, don't need to have the fancy mold to make your pasta. And the beautiful thing, and of course, this guy's not rolling properly. <laughs> God bless live TV. So when you brought the, the semolina pasta uh, in, in its mold and everything else, that's one, one kilogram? Yes, that's one kilogram. See, you see how much we have made with, what, a quarter of that? Probably a quarter. Yeah, I mean, we've got all kinds of raviolis and tortellinis, and I mean, that's incredible. And these are the mezzaluna because they look like a half and the moon. Mezzaluna. But uh, Chef Carlo, it looks more like an empanada. Okay, sure. we can live. We can call it an empanada. We can call it empanada. You want to give it more of a mezzaluna shape? Go ahead. <laughs> give it more of a mezzaluna <laughs> shape. We're running against time here. We are. And actually, I think I heard the bells. Yes. That means that. That means we got about three minutes. Yikes. Okay. Well, three minutes. We actually have two minutes. <laughs> we actually have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Stuffings could be anything. Just remember, have a binder, because once the, um, the pasta goes into the water, mm -hmm. it will cook. If you don't have a binder, it will not hold the, uh, the, the stuffing properly. Do you really need to have a binder? Not really, because your binder is going to be your pasta. It's going to mm -hmm. keep everything inside of the beautiful pocket. And get creative with stuffing. You can do anything you want. Uh, the pasta police is not going to come chase you. They would if they saw what I made. Well, the actu <laughs> well I hope we actually are, we have documented this. So that's going to be interesting. Yes. They're going to be sending me an email, the pasta police. Well, the, they should, you know, just blame it on me. I'm the one who didn't flower it when I've cut it out. Well, hopefully my mom won't be watching this show because otherwise I have to hear it. I will have to hear it for a while. Sorry, Mama Quagliori. Sorry. Oh, yikes. She's going to be like, not very happy. But, and then, get, again, get creative with your pasta shapes. Uh, sky's the limit. Uh, you can make tortelloni, tortellini. You can make your capelletti. And your capelletti can be stuffed with anything you want. And you can make them any size you want. Here, just, make, just to close the show, I'm going to make a kind of like a larger one. And uh, the key is not to overstuff. I know some people are going to fight with that desire of overstuffing your, your pasta, but I try not to overstuff it. Take it to the back, wrap it, give it a nice little wimple shape. Now, before you cook this one, let it sit about five minutes so the shape can really, uh, the shape of the, if you throw it right now in the water, it's, it's, not, gonna, gonna, it's not gonna hold yeah. shape. Leave it out for five minutes and it's gonna kind of like air dry a little bit mm -hmm. and then drop in your pasta or put them in the freezer right Fantastic. away. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thank you for witnesses the mess we made today. <laughs> but with the mess, you see how easy it is to make your own pasta at home. Just. Just do it. I'm going to do it. I mean, that's... I, I'm, send I'm, us pictures. Send please. us pigs. Send us something. Yeah. Show me that you're alive and watching. So, well, there we go. Dude, Looks fresh delicious. Fresh at home, actually. Absolutely. Ah, uh, there you go. Miami crowd is up. The Miami crowd is the watching. The Miami crowd is watching. Apologies for our mess here, but um, this is a studio, not a kitchen. <laughs> no. Now, now we actually all go to the kitchen and start making this so we can we have go. lunch because I'm hungry. I am too. 
Thank you, guys. What's coming up next week? I don't know. I will put it on Facebook. How about I that? Don't have it in my notes. I, I was know. concentrated on the today's show. I was freaking out that we were going to make a mess, and we did. That's okay. But it's a delicious mess because we're going to all throw everything on the pot. It's, <laughs> and make a it's soup. Gonna be wonderful. <laughs> it's a, at least we make a soup. <laughs> Thank you guys for checking out uh, Talk of Food today. Check us out next week, 10, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. So we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Make your pasta. Send us pictures. Thank you.